Hi everyone, welcome to the Fun with Food and Farming speaker series. I'm Cassandra and I'm a master's student from Brescia University College in London, Ontario. Today with me I have three very exciting guests, Liam, Jason and John, who are co-leaders of the Waterloo 4-H Vet Club. They will be talking about dairy cows and showing us some really cool videos of some of the things they do to take care of the cows. If you have any questions for Jason, Liam and John throughout today's session, you can ask the teacher to send a comment and we will do our best to answer them. So we're going to get started with Liam McNabb. Liam is a dairy farmer and he will be showing us a video of what he does on a typical day around the farm. So we can pull up that video. All right, so here's uh, my early morning. It's only about 6.30 in the morning, but uh, these are the young calves. They're uh, between two and four months old and I'm feeling, feeding them pellets. So that's mineral and uh, vitamins for their day. And then here I am feeding our two cats out there. There's uh, mittens and boots. So boots is in the back and then mittens is just popping around the corner there. So I'm just starting up the uh, John Deere tractor for the morning. This is what I use to uh, collect feed to feed our cattle. So I put that into a uh, TMR mixture, which you'll see in a second, it's a big gray trailer. And uh, so we feed the cows a um, quite a mixture of feed. So there's a mineral and supplement that we put in, and there's grain corn, there's corn silage, and there's haylage. Uh, and it's put into the TMR mixer. TMR stands for total mixed ration, which means you uh, blend the feed uh, to make uh, it completely even throughout the entire mix so that basically every bite that the cow takes is identical. So, and then this is actually straw that we add to the mix as well. So this is for, I'm making a mix currently for dry cows. Dry cows are uh, cows that are within two months of calving, so two months of having a baby. So they don't milk during this time, why we call them dry. And uh, so we're just giving them a relaxation period before they uh, have a baby. So that's the TMR mixer. Here's feed being blended, so that's a strong and corn silage mixer. And then I'm just pouring in a mineral right there. Um, so the mineral is providing anything extra for the cow that they wouldn't get out of this uh, ration itself, out of this feed mixture. Um, corn silage is the entire corn plant chopped up into really fine pieces and straw is the stem of wheat. So I fed that out to them. So then this is me making the cow mix. So that's the supplement going in and here on the side, I'm feeding some, so that's some heifers that are eating grain corn and their pellets for the day. Here, it's a pretty snowy day, but here I'm going in, I'm getting, uh, this is haylage. So it's hay that was uh, in a field. Uh, it's alfalfa is the actual plant name that we use. So we take that out of the field and we put it in these concrete bunks so this one is uh, about 25 feet wide with five foot walls and then we cover it with plastic to keep it good throughout the year. So I'm adding that to the mix. The cow mix per day is about 4,000 kilograms, which is four tons, or approximately 9,000 pounds. So then that's me adding corn silage now. It's usually about five buckets of haylage and the bucket is what is on the loader there that is dumping into the top of the TMR mixer. So five buckets of haylage and about six buckets of corn silage. And then there's the feed being mixed up with a little bit of snow, of course. So that'll get blended up and we'll see kind of the colors will blend a bit. And now it's all, it's pretty consistent at this point. And then I'll put that down in front of the cows. So here I am taking, it's an alfalfa bale and, oh, a heifer is a 
young cow, anything that has not had a baby before, that is what is considered a heifer. That is a female cow that has not had a baby. And so here is a, so that's me taking out the plastic. There was our dog, Rory. She's a bit of the, she's the uh, star of the show around here. So that's me starting up the mixer and then I drop this bale in. It's uh, pretty long. There's a lot of long stems in it, like from the alfalfa. And you want it to uh, grind properly and chop them up short so that the cows it can be as even a, a mix as possible. And then, uh, then all of the bites that they take are as similar as they possibly can be. So this is for the heifers. This is the heifer TMR mix. Um, so that's just the bale. So here I'm adding, uh, that is corn silage. And then there might be a bit of, a bunch of corn silage as well. So I didn't put any haylage in this mix. It depends on the day and how much you need to feed them. So there's me blending up the mix. So here I'm dumping it out in front of the heifers. So these are between 11 and about 16 months old. So just over a year old on average. You don't have to get out in front of them. So they get about five, that group, which is 20 heifers, gets about 500 kilograms per day or about 1,100 pounds. So driving past the, there's the cow group eating their feed that I just made and brought to them. And then here's the second group of heifers that I'm dropping the second half of the feed to. And uh, they're enjoying that there, keeping their mouths full, keeping growing, keeping healthy. There's Rory again. You'll probably see her another time. This is a bit later in the day. I'm moving cattle. Um, we bed the stalls with sand. That's what you... Uh, that's what you see right there on the ground. Um, yeah, so I'm continuing to move the cows. So we'll move them all out of the way so that nothing gets in the way of the equipment. Equipment is always uh, something to worry about, making sure it's, um, making sure the cows are clear of it, making sure they're safe. That's my dad putting sand in the stall. So it, it's, it's basically beach sand. And uh, so we use it for the cows. We use it for the cows because it's a, a non-organic material, so it cannot grow uh, any sort of uh, bacteria. So that keeps the, uh, the cows good, clean, safe. Um, there's our one cow. And then here's the milking robot. So. It does all the milking for all the cows. There's a cow, she's voluntarily walking into it, so they get a really sweet feed. Tastes really good, so that's why they walk in, and in turn, they just get uh, milked as well. And here's the brushes cleaning and disinfecting her feet, and then a laser system scans it, and then it'll connect. And while this is going on, my dad is still bedding the stalls. So here I am cleaning out the back of the stalls just with a rake. Um, and then leveling out the big piles of sand at the front to make it as smooth as possible. For, make it as smooth as possible for the cows to uh, lay down. Uh, the cows and on the uh, milking robot, the cows really enjoy those brushes they feel really good it doesn't bother them one bit they're very very soft bristle it's like a it's like a soft toothbrush uh and the uh the milker feels good as well because it's taking milk out of the udder it's keeping pressure off the udder so here's i put a blanket on a calf we keep them warm in the winter and then there's another one with a blanket and she's got a splint on uh the front foot so it was a bit uh, the tendon wasn't right when it was born. 
So we put a splint on the front foot and that straightens out the leg over a period of about three or four days, just slowly. It doesn't hurt them at all. It just makes them walk easier. So here's a fresh cow. So the uh, one calf that I put the pink blanket on, this is her mother. And we are getting her hooked onto the milking robot for the first time in two months. So they're uh, not as used to it as they could have been and uh or well as they were so it takes a couple times they maybe dance a bit they don't they don't like it as much right now but they calm down after a little bit they're just not as familiar with it as they were and uh, there's my dad just helping keeping it on and she's eating away here i am washing the robot arm Finally, this is a big thing, keeping everything working properly, keeping everything clean, making sure the product that we supply to everyone stays good, clean, comes from a good spot. And yeah, so the robot's just completing its wash after that cow. So here I am taking the milk, putting it into a separate pail. There's a lot of foam on it, so I'll overflow the bottle a bunch just to get a bunch of the foam out so that we get as much liquid in there as we possibly can. And then that cow, I'm going to take the milk and go and feed her calf. So here's the, here's the little one that I put the, the uh, calf coat on earlier, warm and comfy. Uh, yeah, we've been dairy farming since about the mid 1950s. Uh, I am the fourth generation dairy farmer. So here I am, I'm just changing the milk filter. We put in a new filter twice a day um, for each robot, so four new filters a day to keep any sort of, uh, um, sometimes there can be a bit of sand that sits with the teeth still that'll go in, but that'll be caught by the filters, no problem. Cleaning everything up, spraying everything down with a hose, keeping the area extremely clean as clean as we possibly can. Uh, and uh, here's a cow walking into the robot and uh, the robot knows it's smart. It has a, each cow has a computer chip. So she had been milked too recently. So it kicked her out. And then I just continue to wash down the robot and then wash down this arm as well. Um, cow and calf health is a big thing. Um, if the cow or calf gets sick, we will, um, we can consult on our own or consult with a vet and see what treatments might be available or might be needed. Um, but we will give them antibiotics if we need to. We prefer not to, but we will. And then here I am cleaning off this. Uh, when we give them, uh, Uh, calves usually drink from the bottle. They get the mother's milk for about three days and then they drink from the bottle for about 10 days and then we'll move them onto a pail. The bottle, they get about just under three and a half liters twice a day. And when we move them to a pail, they'll get about five liters of milk per day. Uh, and that'll be a milk replacer. Um, but yeah, going back to if a cow is uh, sick, we will give her antibiotics and depending on the antibiotic, if there is a milk withdrawal, the milk will not be shipped. It will be dumped down the drain because it is not fit for human consumption and consumption. And there will be a certain amount of days. That'll be, it depends on the antibiotic. It can be anywhere from three to six days, but yeah. If there's no more questions. We might, Move on. That was really interesting to see what a typical day on the farm looks like for you. Thank you for sharing that, Liam. Um, next, we have Jason Brownridge, who is a veterinarian. And today he will be showing us a video of what he might do when called out to see a down cow. Before we start the video though, Jason, can you explain what a down cow is? Yeah, so as part of my job as a dairy veterinarian or, or a general large animal or farm animal vet. Um, sometimes um, we do have to go see cows that are sick. 
I think nowadays most farmers like Liam are, are just incredible at keeping their cattle healthy. Um, and we've given them lots of advice on how, what medicines and vaccines they can use and general health principles. But once in a while, a veterinarian still needs to come to the farm to help out with a, either a cow that is sick or a calf that is sick. And so one of the riskiest periods for a cow is when, or for, um, for her health is when she's having a new baby calf. Um, there's some things that can go wrong whenever an animal gives birth. And so as a dairy veterinarian, that's the most often time I'll be called to a farm to help out. Uh, with a cow. And um, one of the reasons milk is such a healthy product is because it's full of calcium, uh, which is good for your bones. Um, there's many other nutrients as well, but calcium in particular is one thing. And when that cow is having a baby calf, her udder is filling up with milk and there's lots of calcium going into her udder. And that can put some strain on her uh, health system. And sometimes they need some extra calcium to help them stay on their feet um, and to make their muscles uh, remain active. If the cow doesn't have enough calcium, sometimes she will go down. And then the farmer either himself will treat the cow or he'll call a veterinarian to examine the cow and to provide some treatments. So in this video that you're about to see now, you're going to see two veterinarians that uh, work for our kind of 10 vet practice group that have uh, are going to show you guys what a vet would do to examine a, a sick cow that has gone down in her pen. So if you have any questions during the video, I'll be happy to answer them. Hello, I'm Dr. Kaylee Bernardo. And I'm uh, Phil Meadows. And we're from ProVet and we're going to show you our procedure for what we do for a down cow. All right. So first thing we do is a distance exam on her. So looking to see if she's got sunken eyes, bright ears, if she's breathing normally, and looking for any other abnormalities. All right, so with her unable to stand, we then have to do a full physical exam on her. So first thing that we start with is a uh, temperature. So you can have either a digital or um, any other type of thermometer. And we're looking for a temperature that's between 38.5 and 39.5 Celsius. While you're doing this, you can also assess mucous membranes. So we're looking to make sure that she's good in pink membranes and you can check her vulva for that. At the same time, if you've got someone with you, we can start to assess how well she can move her legs and which joints look to be the ones that are hurting. One of the key questions to answer is, uh, can she move the back leg that's, that is closest to you? And so by taking a hemostat, you can pinch between the toes here to see if they'll pull back with pain. If they can pull back, when you pinch them, then you know that there's nerves intact that is gonna be able to make this leg work. The next step is... So we're gonna continue with a physical exam on a down cow, because if you don't find anything wrong with the legs, you do wanna continue on and make sure that you've found as much as you can. So our next step is going to be a vaginal and a rectal. You don't need to do a vaginal on any animal that's more than sort of seven days fresh, um, but doing a rectal should always be part of your physical exam. So throw on your sleeve and put some lube on your glove. Now she's fairly clean and if she wasn't then I would be grabbing some soap and washing her up. When you do a vaginal you're looking to see if there's another calf in there, if the cervix is open or if there's a retained placenta. Yeah, so when people have questions, we'll just pause the video, and that's a good one. Um, a vet doesn't always have to be present for every uh, cow giving birth. In fact, it's very uncommon. Most farmers are very capable of, of helping a cow give birth. Um, a, a lot of them have been trained by their vet over the years or just through years and generations of experience that become very good at helping a cow give birth. 
But that is one of the common calls that veterinarians will be asked to help out with when a cow is having a difficult birth. She has none of those things. When you do a rectal, the main thing you're looking for is manure. So does she have enough of it? What's the color? And does it seem normal? The second thing you're looking for is to see if you can actually get a feel of the uterus. That will take time to learn, but um, if she is greater than seven days postpartum, that'll give you some good information. Once you're done with your rectal examination, remove the sleeve and then move on to the udder. You never want to forget to check the udder in any cow. Um, a, toxic, a toxic mastitis can keep any cow down and it doesn't matter if she's fresh or just a bit or dry. Because she's a dry cow, we don't want to strip out any treatment that is in her. So we're going to move forward to checking the lungs and the heart. So a stethoscope is something that every farm should have. Um, when we're looking at res respiratory rate, we're looking for a rate between 10 and 30. And when we're looking for heart rate, we're looking for anything between 60 and 80 in a calm cow. In cows that are in pain, who are in stress, we're gonna see heart rates that are above 80. For cows that are calm, they're gonna be likely to the 60 to the 80 range. So um, most farmers nowadays will examine every single cow that uh, gives birth within the first few days of birth to make sure she's healthy and getting off to a good start. There are other times during an animal's life where they may become sick and uh, for whatever reason, there's many reasons that uh, either the farmer himself or herself or the vet will come to examine them. The other thing that you want to check for is a steady heartbeat. Um, so with a disease like hardware, you might get more of a washing machine sound than an actual thump thump. Um, and you want to make sure that the heartbeat is regular as well. Cows that are low in calcium can sometimes have irregular heartbeats. So ideally, the easier side to check from is, the is from the left. However, you can check the heart from the right side as well. So in order to get a proper heart rate and to listen to the heart, your hand should be almost completely hidden underneath the elbow and up a little bit. So even with her leg forward, the place that's easiest to hear the heart is right underneath the elbow there. When we check for lungs, you can see that the ribs of a cow go all the way back to here. That is not the entirety of the lung field. So we're looking for a lung field that's sitting about here. And if that seems really small, it's because it is. Cow's lung fields are a lot smaller than a lot of other creatures. So I like to put my stethoscope in at least three different places within that field. And because their breathing can be quite slow, you do want to listen to a couple of breaths in each spot. And then I like to go forward a bit too, because the most common place for aspiration pneumonia to happen is in the right lung field at the very front. So she looks good. The other thing that we're going to look for is in the ears. We're going to see if they're warm or cold. Um, cold ears can be an indication of a milk fever. The next thing we're going to look at is her eyes. So this girl actually has very bright eyes, um, but we can also use just your phone or a flashlight to shine in the eyes to look for a couple of different responses. Um, if they have some sort of brain damage, then you're going to see the pupils not respond to light. So as you shine a light in their eye, you should see the pupils constrict and you're also going to see a reflection of the light within their eyes. And that is a good thing. So this girl is all normal that way, but with cows that have some sort of brain damage, either the lights won't, res the pupils won't respond to light or you won't see the reflection of the flashlight in their eyes. While you're at the head, the other thing that you always want to check for is the nose. So this girl's nose is um, got good color. It's not pale and there's no um, pus or purulent discharge coming out of it. There's also no vesicles or blisters within the nose, which is something important to check for. If she lets you, 
you're going to feel for the papillae within and make sure the lip is covered by them and that there's no bruising, redness, or further vesicles in the mouth. Okay, yeah, someone's asked a very good question there. Um, I did grow up on a dairy farm, uh, but I don't think that it, uh, is, is necessary to become a large animal vet. Uh, there's lots of vets, uh, both in our practice uh, and other practices that, that grew up in the city and, and make wonderful veterinarians. Great, thank you for sharing all of that, Jason. Uh, next, we will move on to John Drummond who is a dairy feed specialist. So I have a few questions for John, but if anyone watching has any questions, please go ahead and send those in. But first to start, John, could you tell us more about what you do as a dairy feed specialist? So absolutely. I'll just give you a bit of background. So believe it or not, uh, dairy cows need a very nutritious and well-balanced diet. So uh, my job is to make sure that that happens for the customers that I work with, the dairy farmers that I work with. Um, so here's how it happens. I'll go out and I'll take feed samples. So you saw when Liam was measuring those, those feeds into the big TMR mixer and he was taking haylage and he was taking corn silage, all right? So what I would do is I would take samples of feeds for my customers. I will send them off to a lab and the lab will analyze them to tell us how much nutrition is in them. So they'll tell us what's in them as far as protein and energy and uh, minerals like calcium and phosphorus. I work with a team of nutritionists and uh, what they do is they then, then work out a, a diet for the cows and they work out everything that needs to be fed. So um, uh, they'll make sure that cows are getting enough of those nutrients so sometimes we have to add supplements, you know, that'll add more protein, that'll add some minerals, that'll add some vitamins. So just like us, just like people, um, cows need to have the right amount of minerals and vitamins in order to uh, be happy, healthy, and um, comfortable. Um, so good nutrition, a good diet is very important to make sure that every cow is uh, producing uh, good quality milk. But just keep in mind, every farm is different. All right, every farm has different feeds. Uh, they might feed different amounts, they might feed different combinations of feeds. So every farm needs their own um, uh, diet worked out for them. And, and that's what I do, that's what we do here. And sometimes we have problems, okay? So maybe cows aren't eating well. Uh, maybe cows are too skinny. Maybe they've lost weight. Uh, maybe they're stressed out because of hot weather. Well, we look at things in their diet and um, we see what we can do to help them and uh, so that they do stay healthy. And um, we even work on cows' diets to, to help prevent things like, you know, a down cow, a cow with milk fever, just things like that. So we do have a very important role um, and, and it's very much a partnership with the vet, the dairy farmer and with um, the, the feed company. So that, that's what I do in a nutshell. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, it's interesting how it's all very like customizable to the cows and what they're going through um, totally. and helping with their health. So what would you say your favorite part about your job is? Um, well, I, I love working with people. So I love the people that I work with here, here at Floridale Feed Mill. Love working with dairy farmers. I love the dairy cow. Okay. I love being able to work with cows. I love seeing them every day. I love, uh, uh, you know, trying to help uh, farmers do a better job in what they're feeding and um, uh, even helping them with problem solving, you know, if, if they're running into any issues. So that, that without a doubt, is my favorite part of the job. Yeah, that sounds fun. Sounds like you really enjoy it. Um, I mentioned earlier that you, as well as Jason and Liam, are part of 4-H. Could you tell us more about 4-H? So 4-H is a wonderful um, program and we've got a great club here going with the vet club. And I, I would tell you, if anybody's thinking of being a veterinarian someday, you know, find your find a 4-H vet club in your area and join. We do a number of things. We learn about animal health and animal sicknesses and diseases, um, how to care for them. Um, so, so it's a, a very interesting club, but we're more than just a veterinary club. You know, we have dairy, beef, we have lots of livestock clubs. We also have cooking and sewing and craft clubs, you know, so we teach a lot of skills like that. So, so by all means, check us out on our website, www.4-hontario.ca. Great. 
Um, so we have a couple questions. We can answer yeah. some of them quickly. So this one's, has the science behind animal feed changed during your career? So much. We have learned so much about the, the nutrient requirements of cattle. Um, we've learned so much about what we can do to help cattle, dairy cattle to, uh, again, to stay healthy and happy. Our ultimate goal, and this is Jason's goal, and this is Liam's goal as well, is a um, happy, healthy, um, comfortable cow that's able to give good quality milk. That's top priority for all of us. Okay, and then one last question. So do you have to change the feed for cows often or can the farmers stick to the same thing? Our goal is that, um, or the most consistent and, and best thing for cows is to stay on a, on, a, on a consistent diet, okay? But things do change. So sometimes we run out of this type of haylage and we've got to move to a different, different silo. So we've got to do the same thing. We've got to take a sample and analyze it and rework the diet so that it stays balanced. So... Um, the job is always challenging. There's always changes to be done. But but again, most times we don't miss a beat. The cows just stay right on eating and milking and, and like I said, being happy, healthy, and comfortable. Perfect. Uh, thank you, John. Um, that's all the time we have for today. But thank you, John, Jason, and Liam for joining us today. It was great to hear about dairy cows and how you take care of them. Thank you to all the students and teachers who are watching today and for all the great questions you had. I hope you all learned something new today. Hopefully your teachers have received our activity kit, so feel free to complete the interactive activity that goes along with this session. The activity kit also includes a link to a short survey on page three, and we would appreciate your feedback if you have the chance to fill it out. If you want to learn more about food and farming, feel free to join our other session later today at 2 p.m., as well as tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. and 2 p.m. as well. That concludes our session, and thank you again for watching.